Hi, this is Anil from Learning Lad Education, and welcome to another tutorial on Java programming language. So, here in this tutorial, we're gonna learn about the array of objects. So, in the previous tutorial on arrays, we have learned that an array is a collection of similar elements, and in an array, we're gonna store same kind of data. And just like the way we store primitive types in an array, we can also store objects in an array. So here, for the demonstration purpose, I have created this array of objects project. And then I have this oops package in my source folder. And then I have uh, a couple of classes, student, which is empty. And then I have this tutorials class where I have this main meta. Now, before learning how we can create an array of objects, first we're gonna define this student class. And here, we're gonna have a couple of uh, private properties. Let's say uh, string name, and then uh, another private property, and it's gonna be int h. And then we're gonna have a default constructor, so it's gonna be student, you know, the same name as the class name. And then uh, this default constructor is not going to take any parameters. And in this constructor, what we're going to do is we're going to assign a name with a value of no name. And then we're going to assign age with a value of one. Okay. And then we're going to have another constructor. So it's going to be student. And let's say this constructor is going to take a couple of parameters. So it's going to be string name and int age. And inside this constructor, what we're going to do is we're going to initialize our name and uh, age properties of the student class. So we're going to use uh, this keyword because our local variables and this instance variables of this class are having the same name. So we're going to refer this dot name to refer to the instance variable of this class. And then we're going to refer name here. This dot name will refer to this instance member name. And this simply name will refer to this local variable name, which we have defined here as a parameter. All right, then we're going to write this dot age equal to age. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to define a method, which is going to take a couple of parameters and it's going to set the values for this name and age. So here, while uh, creating an object from the student class, if you use this default constructor, then, you know, the name will contain no name and age will contain one. So I want to define a method from which I can set the values for this name and age. So I'm going to call that method as set name and age. And this parameter is also take a couple of parameters. So I just going to copy all these things. And I'm going to paste it here. And uh, you know, this method is also going to do the same thing. So the logic is going to be the same. All right. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have another method, which is going to print out the values, which will be stored in the name and age members of the object. So uh, I'm going to call that method as introduce. And in this introduce method, we're just going to say using the print line statement as so it's going to be system dot out dot print line. Hi, um, then I'm going to append the name and then we're going to say and my age is and then we're going to append the age. All right. Now we have this class called student with a couple of private members and then a couple of constructors and then with a couple of methods. So now to create an object of the student class, we're going to be writing student and then we need to give a name. For example, let's say Anil equal to new student. So here with this new keyword, we're going to be calling any of the constructors available from the class and then this new operator or you know this new keyword is going to create an object and it's going to return the reference to that object and then we are storing that reference in this anil reference variable and similarly we're going to create a couple of objects so it's going to be student sreesh equal to new student so this time let me call the constructor which is going to take a couple of parameters the name is going to be Sreesh and age is going to be 25 
and then we're gonna create another one so it's gonna be student Anjali equal to new student and let's say it's gonna call the default constructor which is not gonna take any parameters all right now we have three objects in our program so now if I have to draw an image of it then it's gonna be like this we have this anil reference variable which is going to contain the reference to an object and then we have this sreesh reference variable which is going to contain the reference to another object and we have the anjali reference variable which will contain the reference to another object here make a note that this anil sreesh and anjali are the reference variables which are containing the reference to the objects so now we're going to talk about the array of objects. So here, you know, when we create an object from a class, if we do like this, then in one reference variable here, this Anil or this Rish or in this Anjali, we can store the information of one student. What if you want to store the information of 50 students? At that time, if you go on creating objects like this, then it's going to be like 50 or 60 variables with which you have to deal but what we can do is we can create an array and we can store these objects in that array so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating an array which is going to contain the reference to the objects here this anil is going to contain the reference to the anil object and then srish is going to contain a reference to the Srish object and this Anjali is going to contain a reference to the Anjali object and all these objects are created from the same class student so now if you were creating a normal array for example I have to create an integer array then first I specify the data type which is going to be int then you're going to use a opening square bracket and closing square bracket to indicate that we're going to be creating an array and then we give a name for our array for example marks then we're gonna write new and then we're gonna write int and then we specify how many elements that we want to store in this array if you are storing 10 elements then you write 10 if you are storing 5 elements then you write 5 so now similar to this syntax of creating an array we can create an array which is gonna contain the object's references. So to create an array, which is gonna contain the object's references, first we need to specify the reference of the objects that we're gonna be storing as the elements of the array are from which class. Here, I want to create an array of objects and these objects are gonna be created from the student class. So we're gonna write student as the data type. And then since we are creating an array, we need to use a pair of square brackets, you know, opening and closing square bracket. And then we need to give a name for our array. Here, let me call this as students. Make a note that I'm using this students as the array name and the class name is student. Don't get confused with it. And then we're gonna write the equal symbol then we're gonna write new and then we're gonna write student and then we're gonna use another pair of square brackets and here we're gonna specify how many objects references that we want to store in this student's array or how many elements are gonna be there in this student's array here we're gonna store the references of three objects so I'm gonna write three now all of you know that an array is a collection of similar elements. So in an array, you can store only one type of data. For example, in this integer array marks, you can only store integer types of data. And similarly, in this students array, you can only store the references of the objects which are created from this student class. So you can't store the reference of an object which is created from some other class. All right, now in an array, all of you know that the positioning is gonna start from zero. So the first 
element will be stored at the position 0 second element it will be stored at the position 1 and similarly the last element will be stored at the position 1 less than the number of elements of that array so here what we're gonna do is we're gonna store the objects references in this students array so now we're gonna store the first element of this students array so we need to write the array name which is gonna be students then we're going to use the square brackets and now we're going to specify the position. So the first element, the position is going to be zero and then we need to provide the reference to an object. Here we have created three objects by using the student class. This Anil, Srish and Anjali are the reference variables which are containing the references to different different objects. Now in the first element of the students array, I'm going to store the reference of the anil object. So students of 0 equal to anil and then I'm going to write students 1 equal to Srish and then students 2 equal to Anjali. So here this anil, Srish, Anjali are the reference variables which are containing the reference to an object and with these three statements we are storing that references in the arrays so here if i have to draw an image of it then okay we can see the anil object then the srish object and then the anjali object is created and in the anil reference variable the reference of this anil object is stored and in this Srish reference variable, the reference to the Srish object is stored and the Anjali reference variable, the reference to the Anjali object is stored. Then what we have done is we have created an array which is going to contain the references of the objects which are going to be created from this student class and that array is students. Now what we have done is in the first element of the students array, we have stored the value which is stored in this anil reference variable and similarly we have done it for this Srish and Anjali. Now here what happens is you know because of that three assignment statements with the arrays our first element of the students array is going to contain reference to this anil object because this anil reference variable was containing the reference to this anil object and what we have done is we have written students of 0 equal to anil you know this statement and that's why whatever the reference is stored in this anil reference variable that will be copied to this first element of this students array so now this students array's first element will also point to this and then we have stored whatever the reference which is stored in this Srish reference variable in our second element of the students array and because of that you know the second element of the students array which will be at the index 1 will contain a reference to this Srish object and then we have stored whatever the reference stored in this Anjali reference variable in our third element of the students array which will be at the index to. and that's why you know this third element of the students array will point to this Anjali object now we can access these objects by using the reference variables for example I can access this anil object by using this anil reference variable or from this students arrays first element similarly I can access this Srish object by using this Srish reference variable or by using the second element of this student's array and uh, similar to that I can access this Anjali object by using this Anjali reference variable or by using the third element of this student's array so now you know for this Anil object we haven't set the name and age now if I wanted to set the name for this Anil object then I have two options I can call the setName and age method 
by using this anil reference variable or by using this students array i'm right anil dot set name and age then i need to pass a couple of parameters so it's going to be anil and then my age is going to be 24 and similarly for this anjali object also we haven't set the name and age because you know we have uh, called the default constructor so the name and age is going to contain some default values that we have specified so what i can do is i have two options whether you know i can use this anjali reference variable or i can use this array now here i'm going to use this array so first we need to write the array name so it's going to be students then the index the reference is stored in this third element and the index is 2 that's why you're going to write the index as 2 then we're going to write the dot operator then we can write set name and age we're going to say anjali and then we need to pass the age let's say 21 all right now what we're going to do is we're going to call the introduce methods on uh, all these objects so i'm gonna write anil dot introduce you know i have two options to call the introduce method the first option is you know i can call it from the anil reference variable or i can call it by using the array so just to demonstrate that i'm gonna write students you know the array name then the index which is zero dot introduce all right now i'm gonna run this program you guys can see here hi i'm anil and my age is 24 hi i'm anil and my age is 24 that's because first we have called this method by using the anil reference variable and then we have called the introduced method by using the array so you know both are pointing to the same object now you guys can see here an array of objects is nothing but an array which is going to contain the references to the objects as the array elements we're going to be storing the references of the objects all right now here what we're going to do is we're going to call the introduce method on uh, other two objects and we're going to do that by using the array so we're going to write students then the index one which will point to each object introduce and then uh, i'm going to write students two dot introduce and then uh, we're gonna run this program now you guys can see hi i'm anil and my age is 24 which is printed twice because we are calling the introduce method twice on the anil object once by using the anil reference variable and once by using the array and then we have called the introduce method on this sreesh and anjali objects and uh, it has printed the appropriate values all right now here what we have done is first while creating the object here we have stored the reference in this anil reference variable and then we have copied that reference to this array instead of doing this what we can do is we can create an object and directly store that reference in our array elements which is nothing but i'm going to comment these three lines and also these lines where we have used the anil reference variable you know it is not available now all right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an object and then the objects reference which we get we're gonna store that in the array elements so here first we're gonna store an objects reference in the first element of the students array and to do that i'm gonna create an object here so it's gonna be new student you know the class name is student and the other name is students don't get confused with that then here i'm gonna write i'm gonna pass two parameters or you know i'm gonna call the constructor which is gonna initialize the class members so that you know i don't need to call that method again to set values so it's gonna be anil and then the value is gonna be 24 that's my age and then uh, for the second element we're gonna do the same thing so it's gonna be new student and then we're gonna pass a couple of parameters it's gonna be sreesh and then it's gonna be 25 all right for the third element also we're gonna do the same thing new student and this time we're gonna call only the default constructor so now what happened is 
in this students array we have stored the references of the objects we have done the same thing as we have done before but previously what we are doing is you know we are creating an object then we are storing that reference in our reference variable and then we are assigning that reference to this array elements but here we are creating an object and then whatever the reference to that object is returned we are storing that directly in this array elements all right and here you know we have called the set name and age method by using the array and then if i have to draw an image of it then it's going to be like this you know we are creating three objects and then we are storing the references in the arrays and previously what we are doing is you know we are uh, we have created an array we have stored that reference in some reference variables and then we have assigned that values to the array elements but now what we are doing is we, we are creating the objects and then we are storing that reference directly in the array elements so here i'm just gonna run this program yeah we're gonna save this now you guys can see hi i'm anil and my age is 24 which is this anil object whose reference is stored in the first element of this students array and then it says hi i'm Srish and my age is 25 which is from this Srish object whose reference is stored in the second element of the students array and then we have this hi i'm anjali and my age is 21 which is from this anjali object whose reference is stored in the third element of the students array so uh, this is it guys this is about the array of objects which is nothing but an array which is gonna contain the references to the objects so if you guys get any doubt then don't hesitate to put a comment and if you guys think that you guys have learned something from this tutorial and uh, this video is gonna help some other guys like you then please like this video and share it with your friends and also you guys can get the source code of this tutorial in my website learninglad.com and uh, you guys can uh, like my facebook page at facebook.com slash learninglad follow me on twitter at learninglad.edu and uh, once again thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next tutorial